Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, Alexander. I'm Phil. I'm from Blackburn in Lancashire. This is my younger daughter, Caroline. She's from Cardiff. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Abby and this is my husband, Ed, and we're both from Bristol. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Bernie. This is my best friend, Anne. And we've travelled from Newcastle. And finally, couple number four. Hi, I'm Ewan. This is my friend Neil, and we're students at Glasgow University. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's a man so clever, he's worked out how to live without respiring. Just watch him during today's show. I bet you he doesn't breathe once. <laughs> it's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Uh... <laughs> Hi, everybody. That's quite a tough comic setup for me to, to make the deal with. Without holding my breath for 45 seconds, and nothing. Do I've been holding my breath since I said it for, for no reason. It's like when I watch people underwater, I always hold my breath. Oh, on television, if someone, yeah, yeah, yeah. If someone goes underwater, you've got. No, you go, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm not underwater. I'm fine. It's worse if they're underwater and they go to adverts, because I have to keep. I hold my breath yeah. through the adverts <laughs> as well. OK, thank you very much indeed. Now, all our questions on points have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers our 100 people didn't get. Now, of course, everyone's trying to find a pointless answer. That's an answer that none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Slim and Marianne didn't win the jackpot last time, so we had another £1,000 to that, so today's jackpot starts off at £5,250. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. OK, in this first round, I'm going to take an answer from each of you, but there's to be no conferring. Whichever pair has the highest score at the end of the round, obviously, will be eliminated. Our first category today is... Oh, good, it's words. Words. Abby, pleased with that? Not really. Ah. No. OK, well, can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in I-N-K as they could. Words ending I-N-K. Richard. We are looking for any word which has its own entry in the Oxford Dictionary of English that ends I-N-K. No hyphenated words or proper nouns, please. So any word that has its own entry in the Oxford Dictionary of English ending I-N-K. Very good luck in the studio. Very good luck at home as well. Thank you very much indeed. Now then, Phil and Caroline, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. Now, Caroline, do you like these words rounds? Usually. Yes. <laughs> they're, much, they're more fun when you're not on the first podium, yes. aren't they? What do you do, Caroline? Um, I work for a comparison website. Very good. Are you actually on, on, online the whole time, comparing things? Not all. Um, I work in product development, so actually finding new things for people to compare. Biscuits. Okay. Biscuits. Oh, yeah. Compare biscuits. We have yeah. done that in the office, we just haven't put it online. <laughs> what one? So, so Do you remember, thought, isn't it? Uh, custard creams, actually, for dunkability yeah. and taste. Yeah, I'd, I'd go with that. You, you, would you go along with that? Uh, I wouldn't, but I, I use that um, comparethebiscuit.com. <laughs> <laughs> I went on there they, and they went for a bourbon. Which uh, I don't, it's not necessarily my favourite biscuit, but uh, I respect that. Um, listen, Caroline, what do you like doing when you're not comparing biscuits? Um, I do quite a lot of cooking and we do quite a bit of travelling as well. Good stuff. Now then, words ending in I and K. Yeah. Um, it's probably not a great choice, but it's the only thing that's in my head, so I'm going to say clink. Clink. Clink, says Caroline. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said clink. <laughs> Thirty-eight. <laughs> Thirty-eight for clink. Yeah, I think that's not a bad answer from the first podium. Quite difficult on these words round. Uh, amongst other things, it's a slang term for a prison, after a notorious medieval prison in London, in Southwark. Now then, Ed, welcome to the show. Uh, where are you from, Ed? I'm from Bristol. And what do you do? I'm a civil servant. C can I ask what branch of the civil yeah, service? Yeah, I work for Ofsted. Right, you are. And what do you do when you're not working for Ofsted? Uh, I'm a big music fan. I play in a band. What do you play? Uh, guitar. And I also sing. And uh, what kind of band is it? It's a rock band of sorts. Abby, are they, are they good? They're loud. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Loud's yeah, yeah, good yeah, in my good. book, yeah. 
Um, what are you called? Bosque Monitor. Bosque Monitor. Yeah, that's right. That's good. What is that? Is that, is that something? Is that a sort of technological thing I it's, should know? No, about? It's, a, it's a type of lizard. Oh, is it? Yeah, it looks good written down. Bosque Monitor. Yeah, everyone's on the internet now. No one really talks to each other. So how it looks, we thought. Yeah, no, that's that's a good. But yeah, Bosque Monitor. Good. Um, now then, words ending in I N K. Uh, go out on a limb a little here, maybe, and stick with the lizard theme and say skink. 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 Oh, that sounds good. Let's see if skink's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said skink. Not many, I'd say. Oh, two! <laughs> very well done, Ed. That's a very, very good low score. Very good answer. But two people thought of skink. Uh, yeah, well, I think maybe Cullen skink is a dish, so people will remember it from that, but I suspect most people don't realise it's a, a lizard. It's a smooth-bodied lizard with very, very short arms and legs, or no arms and legs sometimes. What, like a snake? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, you'd be, uh, you'd be forgiven for mistaking it for one. What distinguishes a, a, a limbless lizard? From a from One a of snake. my favourite bands, incidentally. Great uh, band, from, Limbless uh... Lizard. The thing about Limbless Lizard is it looks great written down. Yeah. Um, anyway, there we are. What distinguishes that from a snake? A limbless knows? lizard? Yeah. Well, usually they've got, like, bandages around... Uh, <laughs> around where their arms were, that sort of thing. That would do it. Now, Anne, welcome to Pointless. Great to have you here from Newcastle upon Tyne. What do you do, Anne? Um, I work for a building society, but I also look after dogs when their owners go away on holiday. So wow, well, so how big are your facilities? How many dogs can you take in? Um, well, I've got a dog of my own, so I tend to take no more than two, any more than two. And your dog's fine with that? Yeah, she's pretty good. She's quite accepting of other dogs, yeah. She's no, probably... Good. Yeah, because she gets, she gets to stay inside while they, while they have to yeah. go outside into the kennels. <laughs> yeah. No, they, they, they come in the house, they stay in the house with us as well. Now then, words ending in I-N-K. Yeah, um... I think I'd better play safe and leave the hard stuff to Bernie. Um, I'm just going to say... Blink. <laughs> blink, says Anne. Blink. Well, Clink scored 38. Let's see what Blink scores. Blink, how many people said that? Well, it's right. Oh, 64 for Blink. Uh, yes, a big score there. That's another way you can tell the difference between the limbless lizard and the snake, <laughs> is the, the speed at which they blink. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the blinking skink comes from. Known that's for its blinking. Right. Is that a snake? No, it's a blinking skink. I know, it's not, yeah, it's good. Uh, Neil. Welcome back, Neil. Neil and you, and of course, our only returning pair from last time. What happened last time, Neil? Well, our, our knowledge of Wales isn't as good as we thought it was. Um, we got caught in Welsh politicians, so what can we say? <laughs> yeah, David Owen. David Owen. Mind that, you, he sounds that, Welsh. He does. He um, does, and so did Shirley Williams, but um, it was Rory. It was Roy, Roy Jenkins. It was Roy <laughs> Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> we were after. Anyway, now, Neil, words ending in I-N-K. Right, I'm thinking I'd be a bit trickier here, so I'll go with rethink. Good. Rethink. Rethink, says Neil. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. <laughs> Very well done. Three for rethink. <laughs> Second lowest score of the round so far. That's terrific, Neil. Like, obviously, a word we all know, but people don't think of it because it's got the re on it. It's basically, if, when you're playing this round, if you like it, put a re on it. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scores as they stand. Two, the best score of that pass. Very well done, Ed and Abby. Then up to three, where we find Neil and Ewan. 38, Caroline and Phil. And then 64, Anne. That was a punishing score for Blink. Dear me. So, Bernie, a little bit of pressure on you. You're going to have to come up with a brilliant answer in the next pass. Best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second place please take their places at the podium? <laughs> now then, Ewan. Welcome back. Now, you and Neil are in your third year of reading medicine, aren't you? Yep, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, remind us what you get up to in your spare time. Um, well, as well as studying medicine, I uh, work part-time at the um, tallest cinema in the world, in Glasgow. The tallest? It's the tallest cinema in the world. Which is a very, very high ceiling. <laughs> mm. nope, we've got 18 screens. 
Really? Mm -hmm. All piled on top of each other? Mm -hmm. Six levels. <laughs> Fantastic. Which, uh, which, which, which screen do you look after? Oh, it, um, Whichever one. It can vary from shift to shift. Right, sure. <laughs> <laughs> OK, now then, Ewan, words ending I-N-K. Well, Neil's got a very good answer there. Um, I don't think I'm going to top that, but I'm going to go for stink. Stink, says Ewan. Stink. Well, the high scorers are Bernie and Anne on 64. You're on three, so 60 or less sees you through to the next round comfortably. Let's see if stink is right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. There's your red line. Well, stink is obviously right. And it sees you through to round two. Well done, 44. 47, your total. Yeah, Neil did the heavy lifting for you there, <laughs> Ewan. Well done. That's another way you can tell the difference between a uh, limbless lizard and a snake. It's the uh, unpleasant odour of the limbless lizard. <laughs> so, see, is that a snake? No, that's, uh, that's a stinking, blinking skink. <laughs> Bernie. You are the high scorers on 64. Now, Bernie, um, you are from Newcastle. Well, you're not from Newcastle upon time, by the sounds no, of your I'm accent. No, I'm not. I live in Newcastle. I'm originally from Melbourne. How long have you lived in Newcastle? 22 years. And uh, how is the change of climate? Was that all right? I'm quite used to it now. I'd find it very hard to cope with Melbourne summer now. Yeah, no, yes, you probably would. Now then, Bernie, we want, uh, we want a word ending I-N-K. Well, I'm going to go with the re-theme and say re-link. Re-link, says Bernie. Re-link. You're the high scorers. No red line for you. But let's see how far down the column re-link goes. Oh, bad luck, Bernie. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer, which means you scored the maximum of 100 points. I'm sorry, that takes your total up to an unbeatable 164. Sorry. Sorry, Bernie, no relink, even, even with a hyphen, I'm afraid. OK, now then, Abby. <clears throat> Abby, what do you do? I'm a trainee accountant. Down in Bristol. Uh, actually, I'm based in London. I live in Bristol, but I... You work. commute? I, I sort of commute on a weekly basis, right. so I go up at the beginning right. and then... OK, good stuff. Now, words ending in I-N-K. I think the word chink. Yep, chink. Like chink in armour? Yep, chink of light. Chink. OK, well, no red line for you. You're already through. But let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said chink. <laughs> 19. Not bad at all. 19 takes your total up to 21. Well played, Abby. Yeah, a narrow opening, usually one that admits a light chink. And finally, Phil. You've had to wait a long time for your turn. Now, Phil, what do you do? I'm retired now, but uh, I used to be a, uh, a marketing manager for an independent school. And uh, where was that? In, in, Blackburn. in Blackburn itself. And, and what do you do now? What, what fills um, your time? I, I've, I seem to have developed an interest in cooking, actually. Um, really? Uh, Did you have any interest before? Well, I had an interest in eating it, but... Uh, yeah. But preparing it is more fun when you've got more time to do it. Absolutely. Good stuff. Now then, uh, I-N-K. That's, that's what we want your word to end in. Well, I, I, my original word was, uh, was Neil's rethink, um, so I'll just go with wink. Wink, says Phil. Again, you're through already. No red line for you. But let's see how far down the column wink takes us. <laughs> 70. Wow. <laughs> 70 takes your total up to 108. Yeah, another big score. Also, another, uh, another way you can tell the difference between uh, a limbless lizard and a snake. So, is that a snake? No, that's a winking, blinking, stinking, stink... Ah, oh, nearly. Nearly did that. So, is that a snake? No, that's a winking, stinking, blinking skink. The expression goes. Uh, have you got a good answer for this? Yeah, I've got two. Okie dokie, okay. let's do this. I've got my safe one. Yeah. Which is probably one what I'd give if I were playing uplink. That would score you two points. So, good answer. And my dangerous one. Yeah. Bethink. You scored three points. Oh, no, really? Uplink, a better answer. Wow, there you go. Uh, there's some good pointless answers, though. Let's take a look at a few of them. Double think, as coined by George Orwell in 1984. Hot link, which is a uh, sort of a technical computer term. Kitty wink. It's nice, wow. isn't it? Yeah. Kitty wink, that would have been a pointless answer. Nothing <laughs> as a pointless answer. <laughs> That's an appropriate score for nothing, isn't it? You can also spell it without the K, but it wouldn't help you in this round. Overdrink. A skinny malink, which is a very thin person. That's rather a nice way of... Uh, rather a nice word. Snowblink, tiddlywink. 
was a pointless answer, and another R. Oh, and another computer term, weblink, would have been a pointless answer. Some good ones there, aren't there? Let's take a look at our top ones, the ones that most of our 100 people said. They had 100 seconds online to name as many as they could. These are the ones who got mentioned the most. Pink with 84, some very high scores here. Link, 87, and right at the top, an unusually high score for a round like this. Sync with 91 points. Thanks very much indeed. Uh, so, at the end of our first round, the pair will be heading home, I'm afraid, with a high score of 164, Bernie and Anne. Now, Bernie, there was nothing wrong with your approach. It's always thinking of a good prefix for these things, and that's, uh, you know, that usually it finds a nice low score. It was the right prefix. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but anyway, listen, Bernie, Anne, we'll see you again next time. Look forward to it very much indeed. Meantime, thanks very much for playing. Great. Okay, thank you. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. So, three pairs remain, and at the end of this round, obviously, we say goodbye to another pair in time for our head-to-head -head round. Now, Ewan and Neil, it was round one last time. Hello. Oh, nice being round two. <laughs> yeah, very good. Two very good answers there. Uh, Skink, the best answer. That was yours, Ed, wasn't it? Best answer of that round. Very well done indeed to you. OK, well, best luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is geography. Geography. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Islands of the world. Islands of the world, Richard. On each pass, we're going to give you six clues to different islands. Can you simply name those islands, please? There's going to be 12 in all to have a go at home. Good luck. OK, so we are looking for the islands described by these clues, and our first board of six clues reads like this. The largest and southernmost of the Channel Islands, one of the Galapagos Islands, which was the original home of Lonesome George, the Canadian island, which gave its name to a breed of working dog, the island which was awarded the George Cross in 1942, the Australian island state discovered by a Dutch explorer in 1642, and the French island birthplace of Napoleon Bonaparte. I'll read all of those six again. The largest and southernmost of the Channel Islands, one of the Galapagos Islands, the original home of Lonesome George, the Canadian island, which gave its name to a breed of working dog. The island, which was awarded the George Cross in 1942. The Australian island state discovered by a Dutch explorer in 1642. And the French island, birthplace of Napoleon Bonaparte. Six clues, six islands. And Caroline, you are first up. OK, I think I know four of them. Um, this is good. Hopefully. Um, I think I'm going to go for the bottom one, the French island, birthplace of Napoleon Bonaparte, which I think is Corsica. Corsica, says Caroline. Let's see if Corsica's right. Let's see how many people said it. <laughs> 18. <laughs> well played, Caroline. Good score. 18 for Corsica. Another good start from that first podium. You can now visit the Maison Bonaparte Museum on Corsica, should you so wish. But what are the big attractions there? In Corsica? I imagine they're all quite small attractions, the Maison Bonaparte. Oh, because he was because he was small. Well, yeah, or spell it out. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I think there's. I, I don't know. I assume there's letters and furniture. Probably buy some mugs or something. There's gardens, extensive gardens, um, to the front and rear of the property. I don't want to buy it. <laughs> it's beautifully situated, very close to Corsica train station. Um, <laughs> what which Corsica is a, Central? Corsica Central, which yeah. is about 90 minutes into London. It's not. It's quite. It's quite a nice. <laughs> What a nice commute. Yeah. I'd be a great estate agent. How easy is that? Yeah, well, yeah. I might do that. Bit, I thought you were a bit pushy, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit needy. Yeah, OK. Abby. Hi. These islands. Yeah, I think I know four of those answers. Oh, gosh. Right, I think I'm going to go for the island that was awarded the George Cross. And I think it was Malta. Malta, says Abby, awarded the George Cross in 1942. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people knew it was Malta. Absolutely right. 18, our best score so far. 22 for Malta. Well played, Abby. Yeah, uh, between uh, January and July in 1942, there was only one 24-hour period when no bombs fell on Malta. Wow. Absolutely bombed the whole time mm -hmm. and, uh, and received uh, the George Cross for their bravery in the face of that. 
OK, thank you very much indeed. Neil, you're the last person to have this board. Why not just have a wander through it and see if there's anything you'd like to have a pop at? Right. Um, largest and so the most of the Channel Islands. I can't, Jersey or Guernsey, I can't remember which one of the two. Glasgow Islands, no. I can only know one island in Canada, and that's Prince Edward Island. I don't know about that either. So I, I don't want to take a risk in that because of how badly we did last time. So we'll go with uh, Australian Island State and Tasmania. 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 Let's see if Tasmania is right. Let's see how many people said Tasmania. It's absolutely right. 28. 28 for Tasmania. Uh, yeah, discovered by Abel Tasman. It was enormously popular at the time. It was like One Direction. Massive. Yes, Tasmania. That's where Tasmania comes yeah. from. Yeah, they were just, it was crazy. Um, the largest and southernmost of the Channel Islands? What would you guess for that? Um, I'd pick one. Guernsey. Oh, pick one with a detective on it. Jersey. Yay, okay. Jersey. Absolutely, that would have scored you 41 points. Uh, the Canadian Islands? That I do know, Newfoundland. Newfoundland, absolutely, it would have scored you nine points. And the best answer on the board is the, uh, the Galapagos Island uh, was a uh, pinter, would have scored you one point, so very well done if you said that. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's take a look at the scores. We're halfway through the round. Best score of that pass, Caroline, was yours. So very well done. Phil and Caroline looking strong on 18. 22 is where we find Abby and Ed. Then up to 28, Neil and Ewan. Um, quite tightly grouped together, but yes, Ewan, you're going to find that you are a little bit ahead there. You're going to need a nice low-scoring answer on this next pass. So uh, best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're going to put six more clues on the board, and here they are. The largest of islands, Aran Islands, the island which is divided between Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei, the largest island in the Mediterranean, located at the tip of Italy, the large island country near Africa, to which many species of lemur are indigenous, one of the world's largest islands, part of the Kingdom of Denmark, and the English name of the island, Rapa Nui, famed for its giant stone statues. I'll read those all one final time. The largest of islands, Aran Islands. The island which is divided between Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei. The largest island in the Mediterranean located at the tip of Italy. The large island country near Africa to which many species of lemur are indigenous. One of the world's largest islands, part of the Kingdom of Denmark. And the English name of the island of Rapa Nui, famed for its giant stone statues. There we are. We're looking for the names of these islands described by these clues. Ewan, you need to find a low-scoring one. I know the middle four, so it's just a matter of working out which one to go for. I think I'm going to go for the island, which is divided between Indonesia, Malaysia and Brunei, and say Borneo. Borneo, says Ewan, Borneo. Now, there's no red line for you, you're the high scorers, but let's hope Borneo takes you a good way down the column. Is it right? How many people said it? It is right. Oh, it's a good answer. Look at that. Very well done. Three, Ewan. That's a great answer and exactly what you needed at this stage of the game. 31's your total. Well played. Neil got you three points in the last round. You've done it in this round. Yeah, it's over three times the size of the UK, Borneo. Thanks, Richard. So remember, there are the clues. We need the names of the islands. Ed. Right. Ed. The high scorers obviously are Ewan and Neil on 31. You're on 22, so if you can score eight or less, you'll avoid becoming the new high scorers. I'm going to go for the country near Africa as Madagascar. OK, the large island country near Africa, Madagascar. Let's see if that's right. Here is your red line. Below that, you're through to the head-to-head. -head. Let's find out if Madagascar's right. How many people said that? It is right. 21. 43, your total, Ed and Abby. The fourth largest island in the world, Madagascar. And the lemurs have been so safe there for lots of reasons, but one of which is, uh, is monkeys didn't evolve on Madagascar, the same way they did in the rest of Africa. So lemurs were safe. Lemurs were safe. That's good. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Especially... Also, nice not to have monkeys. I mean, I'll be honest. Oh, I like monkeys. Oh, do you? Yeah, I'm a big oh, fan Oh, I don't like monkeys. Yeah. Do you not? What you monkeys? What are you, nuts? Monkeys are amazing. Oh, no, they look nice on, on things, but no, no, I don't like them. 
think. I'll tell you what I'm not scared of at all. What? Lions. Me? Oh, lions, really? Don't frighten me. Really? A lion could walk up, ten lions could walk on now, furious and hungry. Everyone, everyone would be running off screaming. Me, I'd be like... <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Just not scared of them. Not scared of them. <laughs> prove it. Next show, if you want, prove it. We'll bring ten lions on next show. <laughs> See what I do. <laughs> OK. Right, now then. Now. Now. I, I, I might. <laughs> <laughs> Just... I might. <laughs> now then, Phil. Uh, 43 is the high score now. Ed and Abby on 43. If you can score 24 or less, you are through to the head-to-head. -head. Take us through the board. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure of the top one. I, I've, the, the word Erinmore comes in my head, but I don't know whether that's correct. Um, the third one is Sicily. Uh, the last one I don't know, and I will therefore go for the fifth one, one of the large, world's largest islands, part of the Kingdom of Denmark, and I think that's Greenland. Greenland, part of the Kingdom of Denmark, says Phil. There is your red line. Get below that and you are in the head-to-head. -head. Let's find out if Greenland's right. Let's find out how many people said it. Well done, you've done it. 13 for Greenland. Takes your total up to 31. Very well done, Phil. Very nicely played, Phil. Yeah, if Greenland were a country, it would be the 12th largest in the world. Only 5% of it is uh, habitable. Let's take a look at the rest of them. Um, you'd been wrong on the, the Aran Island. It's uh, Inishmore. Inishmore is the, uh, the answer there. And it's a pointless answer as well, which might surprise some people. Very, very well done if you said that at home. Uh, the largest island in the Mediterranean, you're right about that, Sicily. That would have scored you 35 points. That would have knocked you out. So you did well to avoid it. And uh, do you know the English name of Rapa Nui? I would guess Easter Island. Easter it? Island, yeah. yeah, with the big statues. And that would have scored 28 points. Thanks very much indeed. So at the end of our second round, the losing pair with a score of 43. Really not a bad score at all, Ed and Abby, but I'm afraid the others tied on 31, in fact. Uh, they just happen to score less. So I'm afraid we have to say goodbye to you through no fault of your own. Um, but the good news is we get to see you again next time. Look forward to that very much indeed. Ed and Abby, thanks so much for playing. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Ewart and Neil, Phil and Caroline. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £5,250. <laughs> now, so to decide which pair is going to play for that money, you're now going to go head-to-head. -head. You are now allowed to confer and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. Now, Ewan and Neil, out first round last time. Mm -hmm. And this time, what a change. <laughs> Fantastic. What a <laughs> change. We've had brilliant answers. We've had Rethink, we've had Borneo. Absolutely fantastic. Phil and Caroline, first-timers as well. Just astounding. <laughs> well, you can put your heads together, uh, so best of luck. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns... Famous front men or women of bands. Richard. Yeah, we're going to show you five pictures now of people who famously fronted pop or rock bands. You just need to tell us with which band they are most associated. Very best of luck. OK, let's reveal our five famous band fronts people, and here they are. A. B. C. D. And E. There we are, five front men or women of bands. Now, Ewan and Neil, you have played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Um, pretty hard there, but we'll go for D and we'll go M people. D, M people. M people. Now, Phil and Caroline, the rest of the board is yours. Talk us through it. Uh, I don't know, A, June? No? Know. OK. Um, B is Gwen Stefani, so would be no doubt. C, I think, potentially is uh, Jacob Followill from Kings of Leon, I think. D, I think, is Skin from Skunk and Nancy. And E is Kirk Bain from Nirvana. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to go... Um, or do we go for a definite right one, like? 
B or something. We've got B, Gwen Stefani from No Doubt. You're going to say B, No Doubt. B, No Doubt. So you and Neil said M people. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said that. No bad luck, not M people, which means, Phil and Caroline, you merely have to be correct with no doubt for B, and you will win this point. Absolutely spot on. Very well done. The point is yours. 18. 18 for no doubt, which means, Phil and Caroline, after one question, you are up 1-0, Richard. Yeah, well played. Let's go through all of the answers. A is uh, Jim Morrison. You know, Jim Morrison from The Doors. So The Doors is the answer there. Twelve points. C uh, is Caleb Followill, but it's uh, it is the Kings of Leon, so it would have been a very good answer. Would have scored you five points. Now D is a pointless answer. It's not Heather Small from M People. It is Sky Edwards from Morchiba. Very well done to anyone who said Morchiba. Pointless answer. And E is not Kurt Cobain, I'm afraid. Oh. It's Axl Rose. Oh, of course. And Guns and Roses. And uh, he would have scored you 16 points. Thanks very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. You and Anil get second bite at this, but you have to win it to stay in the game. And it concerns... French cheeses. <laughs> French cheeses, Richard. We're going to show you the names of five cheeses now all produced in France, but we've left out alternate letters. Can you fill them in and give us the most obscure? OK, let's reveal our five French cheeses with holes in, and here they are. We have got V blank, C blank, E blank, I blank, B blank, I blank, M blank, R blank, I blank, R, C blank, M blank, M blank, E blank, T, P blank, N blank, L blank, V blank, Q blank, E. I'll read those again without the blanks. V, C, E, I, B, I, M, R, I, R, C, M, M, E, T, and P, N, L, V, Q, E. There we are, five French cheeses. Phil and Caroline, you go first. The really obvious ones. Yeah, I think it's the same, <laughs> same for me, really. I think you've got to go for the fourth one. If you really don't know yeah. I can work out more or less what the last one is. Go, go, for, go for the four, fourth one. You can go for them. OK. Uh, we'll go for the fourth one, uh, Camembert. Camembert. Camembert, say it, Phil. And Caroline, you and Neil, talk us through the cheese board. Uh, yeah. That was the one I was thinking we could have went for. Um, the second one's Brie. Um, do you know any of the other ones? I'm just going to in my head, I don't know. Um, <laughs> French. Um, I can't work any of the other three are, out. Uh, we just have to go for Brie then. Ah, uh, well. Yep. <laughs> we'll have to go for the second one, is Brie. It's crushing. You and Neil are going for Brie. So, Phil and Caroline have gone at Camembert. Let's see if Camembert's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said it. It's right. Oh, it's a big one. 66. 66 for Camembert. Now, Ewan and Neil, let's find out what Brie scored. If you beat 66, you remain in the game. Good luck. It's a ooh. 91 for Brie. Well, very well done, Phil and Camembert. <laughs> I nearly said Phil and Camembert. I'm sorry. <laughs> very well done, Phil and Caroline. After only two questions, you are through to the final. I'm really hungry, all right? That's what it is. <laughs> you are through to the final 2-0. Very well done. Uh, yes, yeah, a punishingly high score there, lads. I'm sorry. Let's fill in the rest of the board. Do you know any of these? You're quite I know all but one. Oh, do you? OK, so the top one? Vacherin. Vacherin would have scored you three points. What's the other one you know? Pont Levesque. Pont Levesque, absolutely, would have scored you 12 points. The other one is the best answer up there, actually, one point. Well done, anyone who said that Morbier. Morbier would have scored one. Uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid you and Neil, you've trailblazed throughout the whole <laughs> show and then you got to the head-to-head. -head. I'm afraid Phil and Caroline whipped it out from under your noses. But, uh, yeah, Brie, very high scoring and M people. Did you know any of those other people on the first board? <laughs> that was a very bad head-to-head. -head, so that was a tough first board. Was tough. <laughs> bad luck. Bad luck. Well, it's been lovely having you on the show. Thank you both so much for playing. You and and Neil. Great. <laughs> But for Phil and Caroline, it's now time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Phil and Caroline. You've beaten all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy.
You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at an impressive £5,250. <laughs> well, you've done very well, you being first-timers and all. Yes. Cast your minds back to that very first round, way, way back, when we had clink and mm. blink. Mm. Were those yours? A wink. Oh, wink. Yeah. Did you ever think you were going to be through to the final? Not halfway through. No, no. 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 But you've done it, and a brilliant head-to-head. -head. Very exciting indeed, very well played. Now, to win that money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. Firstly, you have to choose a category, and you have five options to choose from, and they are football, film writers, authors, indie music, 20th century theatre. Yes. There's one of them now that's definitely yours, and there's one of them now that's definitely mine. Mm-hmm. So now we're playing this. Um, whose is whose? Oh, mine's football, I'm afraid. But, uh, and mine would be indie music. And I, I, I certainly wouldn't be able to help Caroline much on indie music. I think she might be able to help me a bit on football, but I that's not necessarily it. a reason for doing it. Um, you can go with it. Go no, on. I think, no, seriously, Aldous wins. Oh, Aldous <laughs> wins, oh dear. <laughs> football, please, Alex. Football. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of Arsenal's Invincibles as they could. Richard. Yeah, during the 2003-2004 season, Arsenal FC didn't lose a single game in the, uh, the Premier League, so that team was named the Invincibles. We're looking for anybody who played or was a named substitute at any point in that season for Arsenal. Very, very best of luck. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that £5,250 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. Lee Dixon. Yeah. Um, Emmanuel Petit. Yeah. Um, goalkeepers? Yeah, I was trying to think of it. Well, Seaman was the main goalkeeper. Well, was kind of reserve. Reserve, yeah. Um, it was Nelson. Nelson there, but I can't think of his first. Stuart Nelson. Stuart Nelson. Yeah, I'm, I might I'm, be I'm good okay, yeah. yeah, OK. Um, defended and fall. Um, um, Tierra Moon's going to be high. Mm. Emmanuel Petit might be a good show. But I was going to I say think, Petit. Yeah, I think yeah. Emmanuel Petit yeah. is a good show. Yeah. What about the defenders of Nigel? Was Nigel going to be in there then? Would have thought so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Lee Dixon. Yeah. Uh, Tony Adams, but well, that's going to be a high answer. Yeah, forwards. Um, that wasn't when Ashley Cole was there, was it? Could be. Yeah, it might be worth it. Uh, it's a bit high, though, I think. Yeah, it might be worth a shout. Might not be. Okay, so what do you want the three to be then? Stuart Nelson? Yeah. Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole yeah. and Emmanuel Petit. Yeah, or, I think that. Yeah? Yeah, unless, unless we think of any others in the next eight seconds. Um, no pressure. Um, no. Go ahead, go with that. Yeah, go with yeah. those? Yeah. Okay. OK, that's your time up. We were looking for members of Arsenal's Invincibles, and I now need your three answers. What are you going to give me? OK, we will go with Stuart Nelson. Stuart Nelson. Um, Emmanuel Petit. Emmanuel Petit. And Ashley Cole. And Ashley Cole. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Stuart Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. Stuart, Stuart Nelson, Nelson will put last, and your least likely... Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole. OK, let's put those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Ashley Cole, Emmanuel Petit and Stuart Nelson. OK, so we were looking for members of Arsenal's Invincibles. Your first answer, Ashley Cole. You thought we were probably your least likely to be pointless. Remember, only one of these has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot of £5,250. What would you do with that, Phil? Um, well, I've got a big birthday coming up in a couple of years' time and I've always wanted to go and watch England play cricket abroad and they happen to be playing in the West Indies that year, so that sounds like a good trip. Very good indeed. How about you, Caroline? I'm going with them. <laughs> She is now. Good. OK. So, your first answer was Ashley Cole. Obviously, this has to be correct, then it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. But let's find out. Ashley Cole, is it right how many people said it? Well, Ashley Cole is right. How far down the column is he going to take us? Down he goes through the 40s, through the 30s, into the 20s. If this goes all the way down to zero, you leave with 2,000... Ooh! I just reduced your prize there. I was just saying you would leave, <laughs> leave it with 2,000. Luckily, it didn't get down to zero. That would have been awful. <laughs> £5,250, of course, is what is at stake. Five, then, for Ashley Cole. That's a great first answer, though. And it was a bit of a stab in the dark was, as well. Yes. You weren't entirely sure about the timing of that. OK, so only two more chances to win today's jackpot. We're looking for members of Arsenal's Invincibles. Your next answer was Emmanuel Petit. You're a little bit more certain about that. Let's hope it goes further down at the column. So we've got five for Ashley Cole. 
Let's see, Emmanuel Petit has to be right and it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So for £5,250, how many people said Emmanuel Petit? Ooh. Oh, well. Ooh. Well, that was unexpected. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Your first two answers did exactly the opposite of what you were thought, <laughs> yes. uh, what you were thinking they were going to do. OK, so only one more chance to win today's jackpot. Everything is now riding on Stuart Nelson. We were looking for members of Arsenal's Invincibles. This, you thought, was your best shot at a pointless answer. It has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So let's find out. Stuart Nelson, how many people said it? Is it right? No! Bad luck. <laughs> oh, bad luck. A brilliant answer with Ashley Cole, the one answer you weren't really sure of. Um, and the other two, I'm afraid, incorrect. So, unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer. So, I'm afraid you don't leave with today's jackpot of £5,250. That will roll over onto the next show. Um, but we've loved having you on the show. You. And you, you're amazing performers. Just one show from you. And you do, of course, get to take home a pointless trophy. Thank each. you. So, very well really done. Enjoyed it. Yeah, sorry, that was a valiant attempt. Um, by Stuart Nelson, were you thinking of the reserve goalie, goalie for Arsenal? That's Stuart yeah. Taylor oh. was the man you were thinking of. Yeah. And Stuart Taylor is a pointless answer. Oh. I'll take you through some of the one-pointers. Sylvan Wiltord would have scored you one. Adu, Gilberto Silva, Graham Stack, another of the uh, reserve goalies. Colo Torre, Pascal Sigan, Jose Antonio Reyes, all of those would have scored you one. But here are the pointless answers. There's a guy who's been around the block a bit since. David Bentley had one start. Uh, Tavlaridis, the, uh, the Greek fella, uh, <laughs> he, had, uh, he had one start on the bench in that season, so if you got that, that's a terrific answer. Francis Jeffers also had one start on the bench, they had high hopes for Jeffers, didn't quite work out at Arsenal. Uh, Gail Clichy, now at Man City, but he was a pointless answer. Uh, Jeremy Aliadier, who's uh, noteworthy for the fact his surname's got nine letters in it, but five syllables, which is quite impressive, Aliadier. Uh, Justin Hoyt, the defender, who went on to, uh, to Middlesbrough, was on the bench three times that season. Carnu, who started three games, uh, scored a goal as well that season. And uh, there's two reserve goalies, uh, Rami Shaban and Stuart Taylor. Sorry, Stuart Nelson. Uh, uh, I knew exactly who you meant when you <laughs> said it as well. Even worse than that, Richard, we, uh, our club is Blackburn and Bentley and Jeffers have both played for Blackburn. Oh. Oh, well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to you, Phil and Caroline, but uh, we've loved having you on the show. Thank, Thank you both you. so much for playing. Phil and Caroline. <laughs> So sadly, Phil and Caroline didn't win our jackpot today, which means it rolls over onto the next show when we will be playing for £6,250. <laughs> Join us next time to see if someone can win it. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>